the victors and the vanquished, the oppressors and the oppressed, they all have their say on the people's court. <laughs> the plaintiff, King Henry VI of England. He claims that she destroyed his army valued at over 30 million crowns. The defendant, Joan of Arc. She claims that God told her to do it. And now our judge for the case of the soldier saint, Judge Joseph Wapner. All right, you both have been sworn in. I've read your complaints. Uh, sir, when did you first have problems with the defendant? Okay, right after I invaded France, Your Honor. Okay, I had this army, see? Right, like a whole bunch of guys. How many, sir? So, a whole bunch. If you wish to make a claim against this lady in this court, sir, you're going to have to give me an accurate number. Fields and fields of guys, far as you could see. It's like 11,500. Do you have that notarized? No, but I'm the king. Fine. <laughs> so I went out and I bought them all the, um, the, the armor. Me, me, armor, thank armor. you. And then I loaded them into boats, which is not cheap. I have, I have three estimates. <laughs> and then I said, well, let's invade France. What the hell, we're dressed for it. <laughs> so anyway, we invaded France and when we got there, this bitch is waiting, okay? <laughs> and she defeats us, okay? And that's not fair, because she's a woman, and war is only for men, right? Which is why we invented it, right? Well, to uh, get out of the house. Excuse me, sir, but I, 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 I don't believe that is the point here. Oh. Uh, so anyway, I had to go back to England to get another whole army, but I'd used up all the English people, so I had to use Scottish people. And you can't understand them. <laughs> They say, said, here, have some haggis, and I thought they said haagen okay. You know, when I go on, this isn't very thank cold. <laughs> and then I found out what it is. Yes, that's, thank you very oh, much. Wait, wait, you hear what sweetbreads are. Um, <laughs> um, what's your side of the story, ma'am? He comes to France. That's where I live. Yes. Like it's over that way, huh? I am aware of it.
Christians protect your life. Here come the Christians, I find them rather wrong. The gods is that that shall not kill them. is invented or created or discovered, everybody attempts to take credit for it. A perfect example is the telescope. Now the common misconception is that Galileo alone invented the telescope and this is simply not true. Let's meet one of the many people who also have a rightful claim to the invention of the telescope from Holland, Mr. Zacharias Jensen. I invented the telescope, me! Zacharias Jensen, not that Galileo shit! Uh, how did you first come up with the idea? That's not the point. The point here is the little Mediterranean bastard ripped me off! Well, what makes you think he stole it from you? You want to know? You want to know? I'll tell you! He came to my house for a visit. Can't he visit you? No! It's 1610 AD! I live in Holland! He lives in fucking Italy! That's a thousand miles away! He's got to travel on the back of some stinking mule over around through hostile territories just to come to my house for a visit! A visit! Bullshit! Did you suspect his intentions were dishonorable? I should have when that greasy little pizza slid under the door. What did you say? I said, get the fuck out of here! I'm inventing the telescope! He says the telescope, oh, what's that? Let me see. I said, it's a tube with lenses in it so she can see far away. He says, oh, yeah, let me have a turn, let me have a turn. I said, back up, whopper, you're linguini. He said, whoa, man, calm down, put the knife away, put the knife away. What'd you do? I put the fucking knife away, he boots me in the nuts. Oh. I go in there, clutch in my jewels, he boots me in the head, I lost three teeth, he stole the plans of my telescope, and he fucked off out of town. <laughs> the telescope. Uh, Lippershe, Lippershe, um, no, no, I don't know any Lippershe. Fuck off. <laughs> he says you actually dropped three tabs of acid in his coffee. Hey, 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 hey! His telescope was a piece of shit before I got my hands on it! Cheated on, I hope you're good and jealous. 
Jealous of what? This guy's pathetic. He is a real man. He pleased me in ways you never could. <laughs> What an insult. You go out to find someone better than me and you come back with a human hat rack. And there's no place to hang your hat. You're just saying that because you're jealous. Because I've been to bed with the great navigator Christopher Columbus. No, no, this is not something you feel jealous of. This is something you hold a telethon for. <laughs>
You smile a loving smile and say, Come here. Hey, it's a late last night. We made love, my dear. You would have liked it too if you were here. <laughs>
right. You have nothing to lose but loose you chains. You have nothing to lose but your chains. Chains, that was it. <laughs> so, Engels, how is our Communist Manifesto coming along? Quite smartly, Marx. Good. You know what I've been thinking? Oh, yes. The alienation of the workers must stem from the fact that the more they produce, the less they have to consume. What have you been doing? I sharpened all the pencils. <laughs> and then I put three erasers on my desk, and then I put Fine, three... Fine, good. Well, now down to some serious work. Workers of the world unite. I do like that line. That's a good one of yours, Engels. Um, no, you said it this morning, Carl. Ah, that explains it. <clears throat> um, excuse me, Marx. That's my chair you're sitting in. Hmm? My chair. You're sitting in my chair. All chairs are the property of the masses, Engels. You should know that. No, I had the red one. Remember, I saw it in the marketplace, and I said, dibs on the red chair. It looks like a racing car. It's Engels, cool. the marketplace is a tool of capitalist exploitation. Now, get with it. Well, I now, how does this sound? The history of all hitherto existing societies is the history of class struggle. Marx, just give me my chair. Engels, don't be bourgeois. I need this chair. And from each according to his abilities, to each according to his needs, and my abilities are greater. That's an elitist attitude. No, no. Is the worker who handles only one machine elitist? No, he is skilled. 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 As I am skilled. You see, the problem with you, Engels, is that you do not properly understand the Hegelian dialectic. You have failed to learn from Hegel. As you have failed to learn from history. <laughs> I am beginning to see that true change can never really occur without the violent overthrow of the bourgeoisie. <laughs> Give me the fucking chill! No, oh, I'm redistributing the wealth! <laughs>
had the expenses till after we're in, you know what I mean? Hey, you're from Quebec, you know. Yeah. Flag, a flag, a flag! <laughs> oh, blah! Stop it, stop it! Stop, 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 stop. Yeah. No, PEI is gonna walk unless we sign it there. That's the deal. PEI. Pardon, pay AE. <laughs> yeah, print something. It's an island somewhere. Anna Green Gables, chicks. It's gonna be great, man. Yeah. yeah. Ciao, babe. Love you. K E N E D U H. That's Canada. Tell me. Not to anyone else it is. Louis Riel. He hung up. I told you, man. Give me BC. <laughs> Too American. Yeah, don't. <laughs> hey, I got BCN1. Thank you. Hey, talk to me. Sunshine. Yeah, 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 man. British Columbia's in, right? Oh, man, I was counting on you. What's it going to take? What? <laughs> A railway to British Columbia? Are you nuts, man? Have you been eating those West Coast mushrooms or what? I'm going to clean on you. Hey, what's happening, babe? Oh. Hang on, hang on, hang on. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Eventually, the Fathers of Confederation did get their act together, and in 1885, Canada's east and west coast were joined together by a ribbon of steel. Who's 
Why do we own? Both. Both? Yes, you see, we have a secret treaty to defend France, but we also have a secret treaty with Austria, and Austria has a secret treaty with Germany, so we're fighting with the Germans too. But all of the Englishmen killing Englishmen, that's not cricket. No, that's soccer. <laughs> we'll have the men down in trenches like this, and that way they won't be able to see that they're shooting each other. Brilliant, sir! Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> The terrible fighting raged on until Christmas Day, 1918, when a one-day truce was declared. The men could be heard singing Christmas carols in the trenches. Slowly they emerged, and the two sides met on no man's land. All is the shop. Cigarette de cliches? ta! Takes a whole pack. Oh, I didn't know we're exchanging gifts. Here, have some chocolates. Uh. English chocolate. I only like Dutch chocolate. Well, it's the thought that counts. Well, if you'd thought about it, you would have invaded Holland and got me some Dutch chocolate. Well, if you thought about it, you know I'm trying to quit smoking. Fine, I'll take my gift back. Oh, forget it. This is supposed to be a one-day truce, and now it's gotten so commercial, I just hate it. And stop the stupid piano play. <laughs> the war's over, the boys are home. It's the Roaring Twenties. <laughs>
in my contract. You can read it. Okay, now, the little girl should hand these the flowers, and I take them, and then I smile warmly at the crowd. Mm, like that. <laughs> now, I would like to move this way. Very... <laughs> Follow me, don't call! <laughs> I'd like to move this way. Very nice, very casual, like this. <laughs> I'm going to shriek my hate right uh, here, I guess. Could we get this marked with some tape? Thank you. Now, you cue the war, then I say world. That's the cue word, world. As in, as in. Today, Germany, tomorrow, the world! <laughs> All right, men, this is the big invasion. Yeah!
The year 2000. The new millennium begins. Nuclear winter, dust, smoke, and straw is tied to sticks to help sweep out radioactive fallout from caves. Ushering in a new era of cleaning convenience.